right. Um, good evening to everyone. Hopefully you can all hear me. So today I'm going to talk about, um, hi Kathleen, I'm going to talk about critical thinking for our kids. Uh, for those of you who are just joining, hello and a good evening to all of you. So for the past couple of weeks, well actually past probably month, I've been doing some talks on, um, on parenting on Facebook because I was asked um, by a number of people just to share my, my thoughts on it because I tend to write a lot of stuff on Facebook about parenting. And I've done a few on how to teach kids values, um, the parenting process uh, as a whole, uh, how to teach kids emotional intelligence, and some few other topics. Um, the last topic that I did was on the stages of child development. Um, today, I said I'll do one on critical thinking for kids. So I'll do a talk quickly for about 30 minutes um, on critical thinking for for kids. So essentially, the reason why um, I'm doing the, these talks, not because I'm some sort of child psychologist or anything, it's just I'm a parent who's just sharing um, his experiences and what I've, I've learned and read about uh, when it comes to parenting and raising kids. And I've been asked to share by quite a number of people. Um, so I just think it's prudent just to give my thoughts. Right, so critical thinking then. So the last time that I spoke <clears throat> on Facebook, uh, when I spoke about the stages of um, child development, um, I spoke about um, the brain um, function and how the um, brain, the child brain um, develops. Um, for all those who would like to listen to the full thing, it's, it's on my Facebook um, page. And um, I went through the different parts of the brain um, and then focused really on, on what's called the frontal lobe, so the executive function of the brain, um, where that part of the brain looks at you know, abstract thinking and, and problem solving, uh, reasoning, uh, organizing things, recognizing patterns, uh, regulating the emotions or so the emotional intelligence part, but then um, communication and how, how well the child expresses uh, language. Um, it also looks at the way the child organizes their thoughts and puts it down on a piece of paper. How the child remembers um, facts, uh, how they start to complete tasks, tell stories, etc. So that executive function of the brain really uh, is really important. Uh, and that's why it's important to the critical thinking. Critical thinking is therefore not what we teach the, the kids, but really how they actually um, think, how they regulate that part of the brain to actually think and solve, solve problems. So it's important as uh, parents to actually try and take our kids through certain exercises to actually develop that part of the brain and uh, form the neural uh, patterns and connections that are required for that part of the brain to function properly. Um, so that's essentially what critical um, thinking thinking is, the ability for the child to process data, um, to be able to sift through that data, recognize the data, um, and use that in making the uh, decisions. And uh, for the parents, the more and more we take the child through the discipline of, you know, recognizing data, analyzing data, recognizing patterns, analyzing patterns, uh, looking at options, being creative, making decisions, you know, the, the better it is for the child, they start to form uh, better connections at the frontal lobe part of the brain where the executive function uh, occurs. <clears throat> so really for, for parents, it's, it's important, it's really important to take our kids through that, that, that area of critical uh, thinking. And um, I also spoke about um, how the child learns. So it's important when we're starting these kind of uh, cognitive uh, disciplines that we 
we understand how our child child learns and then i spoke about that that the child um children all learn differently so some have literally mind some learn in active ways by doing physically and um, some have analytical minds where they want to sort of process things and and, and run things through them in their, their heads over and over again um, and then there are those that are just creative and very expressive so it's important for for us as parents to know the kind of mind that our child has so that when we then start doing critical thinking exercises we can make it more fun because we then link it to the kind of activities that the child naturally gravitates to so the child is someone that has a literary mind and isn't it you know reading and listening to audio tapes and that kind of stuff then we can perform critical thinking exercises that are linked um, to the literary mind of the child the child is analytical we can do that um, linked to the analytical mind of the um, child i'll put a link up on my page where the parents can take their kids through a short it's like a five minute questionnaire um, so that you can understand and the child can also understand how the child learns and where the child gravitates to in terms of uh, the ease with which they assimilate information so whether they're literally active or analytical or creative once once parents we then understand that it's a lot easier for us then to be able to impart uh, knowledge uh, to our kids a bit more effectively so i'll put that link um, up on my, my uh, facebook page actually i can type it now so let me just put that link in here now all right so that's the link so if you go to that link it's five minutes you can take your child through that link um, and get to know how your child learns and your child can also then figure out how they learn as well it's, it's, it's a very short short um, questionnaire all right so once you've now then figured out how your child uh, learns and the child has also figured out how they learn uh, more comfortably we can then start looking at um, how you're going to develop the child's um, critical um, thoughts. Now, the way in which um, we need to think about this uh, is to think about it in terms of the hierarchy in which um, critical thinking uh, occurs. So there's a, there's a structure and there's a hierarchy in which critical thinking uh, occurs. Um, and that, that hierarchy really starts off from the lowest point of, 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 of thinking, which is basically uh, memorizing. So the child just recognizing, listing, naming, identifying things, memorizing things. So you see that um, when children are very young, you know, they, 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 they get taught A, B, B for bat, C for cat, all that kind of stuff. They say the uh, 0 to 10, uh, 0 to 20 numbers repetitively. So at that point, the starting the process of critical thinking and developing that frontal loop using the lowest point um, of the critical thinking hierarchy which is just remembering stuff so you're using the memory okay now my problem with uh, Ghanaian education i've been in the Ghana education system as well as the british education system is that we tend to focus a lot on this lower hierarchy way of, of, of developing critical thinking, which is remembering what we call true and poor um, in Ghana. Um, and in order for the for the for the executive function of the brain of the child to, to grow more, uh, we need to move up that hierarchy. So we need to move from the bottom line hierarchy, which is just recognizing, listing stuff, naming stuff, identifying stuff, uh, remembering stuff, the memory function, and move up to the next level, which is understanding function. Um, so where you're now starting to look at the data, you're starting to interpret things and compare things against each, each other. You start to summarize um, things, infer things. Um, so then you start to move the child then up the hierarchy to understand it. Now, typically, from what I've researched, the critical function uh, of the child starts to get really developed between the ages of um, is it five and eight years. Um, when, when the child then starts to be able to reason um, a bit more and starts to ask questions uh, more. So it's that point that you really need to start engaging the child and working uh, purposely on the, on, on the critical um, activity function of the brain, the executive function of the brain. So you then move, you then move, uh, hi, uh, Pusha, you then move from the remembering hierarchy to the understanding hierarchy. And they move from the understanding hierarchy up to application so how the child actually uses things 
how things are implemented, how things work. And then you then move up the next hierarchy, which is then analyzing. We are now looking at structuring things, you know, outlining things, trying to integrate patterns, trying to organize patterns into groupings, and organize data into groupings, and, and, and analyze things. And then after the analyzing, you then move to um, evaluation, um, where you're now making actual critiques and judging, um, you're checking um, and work, you're, you're forming hypotheses and theories um, in your head. And then the highest form of critical thinking is a creative stage of critical thinking, um, where you're now sort of constructing things, you're, you're, you're building new things from yourself, whether it's applying existing theory and creating something new. And you're devising new things, you're inventing stuff, you're designing new things. So when we look at the critical thinking hierarchy then, it's remembering at the bottom, which is the basic foundation, and then understanding, and then application or applying, and then analyzing, and then being able to evaluate, and then being able to then create, okay? So the more we, we engage our kids from the ages of five onwards to start, start moving up this, um, critical thinking um, hierarchy, the better the, the, the executive function of the brain, the frontal lobe of the brain um, starts to, to work to full uh, potential. Now for me, I strongly uh, believe that, uh, that some of the issues, well, a lot of the issues that we have in Ghana are because of the fact that we haven't developed or the education system um, and the parenting uh, fraternity isn't actually developing very well this critical thinking function where we're, we're, we're sort of focusing and stagnating around the remembering and a bit of understanding part of the function we're not we've not moved up to the creating part where we're actually dealing with our own problems um using our own locally made solutions and ideas you know we, it's we become a bit lazy so we sort of import ideas in to try and fix our, our own problems and uh, what we need to do is to try and get our kids to move up that hierarchy so that they can they can actually engage uh, you know the the, 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 the the executive function of the brain um, a lot a lot better so then the question then is how how do we how do we get our kids to move up that 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 function now understanding how our kids learn is one of the first steps that enables us to actually move through that function so let's take for example uh, a child who learns through um, active uh, activity. So the child is a physical person, likes to get out and do stuff, likes to play, likes to run a lot. Um, the activity that you can do with the child that will actually move the child up that critical um, hierarchy. Okay. Um, so what we need to remember as parents is that for each stage of that hierarchy, we need to create um, a set of uh, scenarios and, and, and an environment that enables a child to actually create, evaluate, analyze, apply, understand, or remember something about what that child um, is doing. Now, the best way um, to do that is to ask or get the child engaged um, in communication, where we're asking um, questions using and, and getting feedback and answers uh, and getting into a dialogue using um, critical um, thought processes and, and, and questions. So, you know, the, the, the why, um, the how, uh, the who, the where, the when. So using these, these uh, critical um, questions to actually get the child uh, engaged. Okay, so these uh, six critical questions um, helps the child to actually start thinking about things before they actually speak. So it actually starts to shape the child's mind in terms of how the child should think, not what the child should think. Now, a lot of what goes on, um, I, 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 I feel in, in, in the Ghana education system is that we're teaching our kids uh, what to think, you know. But we need to also create the space where we're teaching our kids um, how to think. And um, I believe strongly that if we, if we engage using these um, six critical questions, any time that we have a learning moment with the child, uh, we actually start to get them to think, sorry, excuse me, using the executive function of the brain. So let's say the child is playing out, you know, running, running around, um, falls down, hurts himself, starts crying. You know, you can ask these six critical questions, you know, 
Now, how, how did it happen? You know, why did it happen? When did it happen? Where did it happen? And what could you have done to stop you um, falling over? Um, you know, and, and, and it may seem um, silly, but whilst you actually have the dialogue with the child, you know, trying to um, stop the child from crying and, oh, are you hurt, etc. You can throw in some of these questions and it actually starts to engage um, the child's uh, mind. You know, it starts to help the child uh, reason and actually think about the situation that the child was in and why that thing happened to, to the child and how the child could do things differently and where the child could go and play more safely and who the child could then um, call that the child is hurt, for example. So all of a sudden, you, you, you've taken a child who has an active mindset, who's in uh, an environment and a scenario where they're just playing and they're hurt, and now through that active mindset and through that scenario, actually engaging them using the six critical questions and then starting to move them up that critical um, thoughts um, hierarchy. Okay, so the six critical questions again are how. Um, so I'll give an example. So how did they say something? Um, were they happy? Were they sad? Uh, were they angry? Um, did they care? Um, why did they say what they said? Um, was it to explain an opinion, for example? Uh, were they trying to make someone look good or bad? When did they say what they said? Um, was it before something happened, after something happened, or during something that was going on? Where did they say what they said? Um, what did they say and then who did they say it to? So typically with my kids, it, when they have, um, let's say, uh, the, uh, an argument at school, you know, when a car driving back home, and then they start telling me, well, you know, I was um, in school and uh, this person next to me took my pencil and I wasn't happy, blah, 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 blah. You know, a parent would say, oh, okay, sorry. And that would be the end of the um, situation. But I think as parents, we need to take that a bit further, you know, Remember that every every moment is an actual learning moment for the parent and for the child. So the moment that the, the, the child gives you the opportunity to engage, straight away a light bulb should go in your head. Ah, it's a learning moment. And straight away, you should then start to engage as actively as possible every part of the brain function of that child. Okay, especially that frontal lobe, that critical. Uh, part of the child so the child says oh you know that pe person took my pencil um at school and i wasn't happy straight away you can start asking the child oh okay so who who was that person the moment you ask the who was that person you started on their remembrance you start on the bottom line of the of the of the hierarchy where you're trying to get the child to try and recall um who the person was that took um, the pencil from the from, from the child okay and then if you ask them then oh so why did they take the pencil all of a sudden, you're starting to get them into the understanding part of the of the of the hierarchy of critical thinking. Okay, where you're now trying to get them to sort of sit back and try and reason out why they take the pencil. Was it because they don't have a pencil, or was it because you know they're just selfish like that and they just like taking pencils? Or was it because they're just indisciplined? Or was it because um, they just wanted to disturb me? Or was it because they wanted to get my attention? So all of a sudden, the child is now going off in so many divergent. Um, angles you understand so many different diversion angles and what that does is that it starts to give the child that kind of abstract thinking as well and, and stop the child from being siloed in a specific way of thinking okay it also helps emotional intelligence actually um critical think uh, thinking and emotional intelligence are very very <clears throat> sorry very very um closely um related so just by asking these kind of two uh, questions you straight away move the child from remembering into the understanding okay and then you can ask questions uh like um um so um, when, when it happened um so how, how did you feel and then all of a sudden you you move them into um if analyzing and, and, and evaluating how they felt um and then and then and then through that you can then ask them so but how do you think they they, they uh, felt when you got angry so all of a sudden you're now putting them in the other child's shoes and also analyzing and evaluating. And then you can then ask, so how, how do you think um, you could have dealt with this situation better? Now, all of a sudden, you put them in a situation where they're now in the creative phase, because they're there now having to go back to the scenario, look at all the data that they remembered, understood, analyzed, evaluated in terms of their emotions, the child's emotions, um, the object that the child took, how it made them feel, etc. And then for them to then try and devise 
uh, a solution and a different way to react um, to that problem. So they're now in the creating um, phase uh, of the uh, executive uh, function. So it's a simple it's a simple problem that has occurred at school. But the way the parent asks those six critical questions sort of directs the child from you know the bottom line, remembering all the way through, understanding, applying, analyzing, uh, evaluating up to the creative stage, where they're now actually reasoning and thinking about the situation and trying to map out. Okay, could I have done things differently? And then you realize that when they then go to school and the the a similar scenario happens, what you see is that when you pick them up the next time, they would themselves say, "Oh yeah, um, mom, dad, yeah, uh, the, the the kid picked up the the pencil from me," and I asked him why he keeps coming for my pencil, and then he said, "Oh, he just likes my pencils because he likes the color of my pencils," and and his his parents. Um, um, bought him some pencils that he doesn't like when he told his parents that he wants my pencils they said no so he just likes my pencils then all of a sudden now the child is actualizing you know uh, what you taught them and it's actually bringing you more feedback and it's actually developing more dialogue with with the person that they're they, they've, they've uh, engaged with you understand? so 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 that that for me um, is an example of how we can we can develop uh, critical thinking uh, in our kids it doesn't have to be anything uh, complex uh, whatsoever it's just it's just two things it's understanding the critical thought hierarchy and then understanding the six critical questions and then understanding the fact that every moment that your child engages with you is a learning moment so when you have the opportunity of getting a learning moment you can actually take the child through that um, executive um, critical thought hierarchy using the six critical uh, questions and engaging the child and, and, and getting the child to think um, and reason more in abstract ways looking at different um options looking at the facts and the data on the ground assessing and evaluating how they were feeling so introducing emotional intelligence um into it um looking at um how they could do things uh, differently so you're 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 you're, you're, you're then now showing the child and how to be creative with that with that with the thought and process and what you see is that the more and more you do these kind of things understanding specifically how the child learns the more and more you do these kind of things you realize that the child then starts to um themselves engage you more and then start asking you critical questions and when the child then starts asking you the oh daddy why are you doing that? or what are you doing we then don't you know do the typical uh Ghanaian parenting thing and say i'll oh, keep quiet you know too busy to listen to you. The moment the child starts asking questions back, that's them actually understanding that okay, um, I I want to be fed more. I want my, my, my executive function to grow more. So I'm not coming to you to try and create that scenario where you take me through um, the executive um, critical thought um, hierarchy. Even even surprised the kids 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 the kids they're highly intelligent. The moment you start showing these things and the brain starts connecting the dots, they themselves will start leading you um, um, in, in ways where um, it'll actually give them more more and more experience and more 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 and more exercises. And I think as well um, that I'll share with you that my, my my dad did with us when we were growing up uh, were two things. One 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 was that he got us to play a lot of chess. Um, and what I find about chess is that it's it's a game of um, strategy and it's a game of um, options. So you're always constantly looking at the pieces on the board, your pieces um, and the opponent's pieces. And you're, you know, coming up with permutations of different moves and different options and scenarios of what if I move here, what will happen if I move here and there and he moves here and then there, what will happen? So you're, 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 you're constantly permutating things. And that, that actually engages a lot of that frontal lobe uh, uh, part of the brain. It's a very, very, very good game. So those of you parents um, out there, if you can encourage your kids to uh, play chess or join a chess club or something, um, I think it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be worthwhile. It really it really opens up the, um, the reasoning uh, part of the brain. And I think that he used to do with us a lot was um, uh, summarizing and reading, so reading books and summarizing them. Um, so he'd get us to uh, uh, read a storybook, and then he'd get us to summarize the storybook on, on a page or two pages. Um, 
and it was quite it was quite interesting because you you read the book and then you don't have to remember it first of all in order to be able to summarize and then you have to then start sort of understand um, um, who the characters were and what the general um, um, outline of the story um, was because you obviously realize that you can't remember every single page because you have to summarize. So then all of a sudden your brain starts to go into, okay, what are the important parts of the story that I need to um, remember? And um, what are the key characters that I need to remember? And in which way was the plot of the story uh, going? So all of a sudden you're now moving from remember to, oh no, remembering is not going to help me um, fully to do this. And I need to go to understanding the story because that will help me to actually um, break the story down uh, more. Um, and then all of a sudden you then move from um, just understanding it to, all right, okay, how am I going to apply what I've understood and analyzed and evaluated to create the summary in such a way that, um, um, that the entirety of the, of, of the I don't know, 20, 30, 40 page storybook would, 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 be, would be put down concisely in one, one, one page. And sometimes he used to get us to even um, create stories. So he started a story um, with a random word, I don't know, um, let's say cats. So we start a story with the word cats. Okay, so those are cats um, um, that I found one day outside the house, um, sat uh, lonely, um, looking um, hungry and, 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 and wanting assistance. And then he stopped the story. And then he said, right, we should continue. So we, you'd have, let's say, three of us. So him, myself, my two brothers. So he, he start the story and then he stopped. And then I'd have to continue the story. And then I stop, and then my other brother have to continue, and then you just keep going around and around and around and around and around. And then for 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 us as kids, it was quite fun because it was, you know, it was introducing an element of um, creativity um, as well. Because you having to think um, on the spot, you having to, you know, pick up the words and things that you already have in your mind, look at the trend of the story, and then you know take it um, in, in a direction that you want to take it in. And sometimes you'd want us to take it in a direction where it make it difficult for the next person to actually make sense of the story um, when they continue the story. So that was also another interesting game um, that he used to um, play with us. So, I mean, they're, they're, as parents, we just need to get creative. There are loads of ways in which we can we can fire up um, um, our kids' um, minds so that they think, they think um, critically. I also um, implore parents to actually find time to speak with the children's um, teachers to find out um, how the, the, the teachers are actually engaging the kids um, to think critically uh, in class. So at my kids' school, they actually do critical thinking as part of the um, um, curriculum. Well, my, my, my oldest daughter's teacher does anyway. So she, she tends to give them scenarios um, for them to look at and to devise different solutions to problems, uh, et cetera. And then she then takes them through how to think uh, critically when they're, when they're de um, devising problems to uh, solutions. But I mean, you can do it in different ways. And for those of you who are religious, uh, et cetera, for example, with, with the kids at Sunday school um, that I um, teach, when we do, uh, let's say a story from, from the Bible, let's say, um, let me see, uh, I'm thinking of a story. Let's say, let's say Moses, let's say Moses, right? Um, let's say Moses with the staff and then they get to the Red Sea and they ask apart the, 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 the Red Sea, you know, with the staff. Sometimes what I tend to do with the kids is I, I'd say, okay, well, after obviously teaching the, the whole um, moral, um, morale behind the, the, the story um, to, the, to the kids and the things that they need to pick up from the, from, from the, from, from the story, what I tend to do is that I tend to then throw a, a, a what if in. So I say, okay, well, what happens if, well, what do you think would have happened if Moses took the took the um, rod, uh, went to part the Red Sea, and then the sea didn't part? And I tell them, okay, take the story on from there, and let's let's see what what would happen. And it's interesting what you see. You you have kids just frying off with, oh well, you know that the pharaohs, are, the pharaoh and the chariots are coming, um, and Moses is trapped between, and and the Israelites are trapped between the sea and. The Pharaoh, so they'd have to turn around and, and fight the the the, um, the Pharaohs, and all of a sudden, then one kid would go off on a, on a tangent about what kind of equipment do they have, um, what what could they use um, on them that they could use as weapons, etc. 
So all of a sudden, you've, you, you, you've taken a, a simple um, biblical story and you turn it into a critical um, uh, thinking uh, process, you know. And it's fun for the kids, but all of a sudden, it fires the imagination. They, they start going off on tangents, you know. So, some, some of the... Um, some of the tangents are totally ridiculous, but but you know it's, the point is not to to, to 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 come up with you know set specific um, sensible answer. The point is to get them up to the creative stage where they're just firing off random ideas that may seem um, silly, and all of a sudden you then have them um, engaging each other, um, debating the ideas that were firing off because one person thinks his idea is better than another person, etc. Then you know and it's it, it's sort of that helps helps the kids to to not only engage in terms of um, communicating ideas and and and, and um, debating um, ideas or critiquing ideas, but also creating um, ideas and controlling their emotions when it comes to how they they they, they um, debate um, other people's um, ideas as well. So um, yeah, these are my my thoughts. I wanted to make it just thirty minutes, um, thirty two minutes. So I think I'll, um, I'll wrap up here. So just to summarize then, um, critical thinking is about the ability of the um, child uh, to start to reason, you know, to start to make decisions, to start to um, understand patterns, uh, remember things, um, evaluate um, data, um, be creative, think abstractly, analyze data, communicate, in an emotionally intelligent um, way uh, and not just be factual with the data but sometimes go off on a tangent and try and come up with um, creative um, ideas and solutions to, to things um, it's 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 specifically to do with that frontal loop part of the of the brain you know, that the, the part where well, we're thinking we sort of do that that, that that part of the brain here the frontal lobe of the of, of the brain and that frontal lobe of the brain is where all the the executive function, all the major thinking, the big ideas come from, um, you know, the abstract thinking, uh, thinking out of the box, all these various fancy names for, for it. Um, that's where it comes from. So that's what Chris Carl thinking um, is about. You know, the, the, the kids then um, have to be, be tutored or coached through the, um, the critical thought hierarchy and um, using the six critical questions of how, why, uh, when, where, uh, what, and um, and who, um, and these questions need to be asked in such a way that you take the child through the actual hierarchy. So you go from the child just simply remembering things to be able to understand, to be able to apply, to be able to analyze, to be able to evaluate, and then the actual pinnacle, which is to then you know create um, something uh, new. Um, yeah, so the, these are these are uh, um, the various facets of, of, of critical and thinking. And uh, like I said, I implore parents to um, take all the various learning moments that they get with their kids to actually try and hammer some of these things in. You know, they're, they're, it's a discipline, it's a drill. You need to keep drilling the kids, drilling the kids, drilling the kids until it becomes a habit. And then you realize that the kids with them, themselves start to ask you um, questions, um, they start to ask you reason. And have uh, what we call you know eureka moments where all of a sudden they'll ask a question and realize oh yeah that was a brilliant question because it's, it's opened up a different idea in my head um so yeah parents please please um, let's teach our kids the discipline of critical thought let's move them up from this chew and pour mentality that's going on it's, it's, it's totally uncalled for uh, let's move them out of that bottom line um, hierarchy of, of, of the critical thinking and um, process so that they can they can fully engage their brain and, and you know, recognize the full potential of the brain the brain that they um they have um all the rest of my videos um are on my facebook page um so you can you can check you can check them out it's all they're all related to each other so you can check them out and um if you've got any um topics that you want me to speak on uh you can hit me on my inbox and i'll uh, i'll go do some research and add what what I know and what I, I do with my kids and then um, come and talk on it. Um, like I always uh, sign up with, I am not a, a clinical psychologist. Uh, I'm not a child um, counselor or anything like that. Uh, all I am is a parent, um, just sharing some of the stuff I do, some of the stuff that um, 
my parents did with me, um, stuff that I've learned. Um, for the parents out there, you got to remember that we are who we were conditioned to be. So if we want our kids to be better than what we are, we need to um, understand that we are who we've been conditioned to be. So therefore, we need to open our minds to a lot more knowledge and a lot more learning so that we can also impart um, newer, fresher ideas um, to our kids. Um, so parents, let's get out there. Let's go, let's go learn more about parenting. Let's, let's do some more research. Let's share the knowledge. Let's ask questions so that we can, we can, we can raise our kids um, better. And for those of you who aren't doing it, remember that you're uh, you're creating potentially the next uh, armed robbers and, and thieves and in government, etc. So um, our society starts from us, the parents. If if we fail um, with our parenting, um, we feel we feel the society uh, in general. So uh, let's take let's take uh, the parenting uh, seriously. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign out now then because it's pretty late and I just wanted to do um, 30 30 minutes here. So have a good uh, have a good weekend, guys, and um, I'll hopefully be back on again next week um, Friday. I try and do this every every Friday, so I'll hopefully be back on next week and um, Friday to talk about a different topic. I don't know what topic yet. Like I said, if anyone's got ideas, just let me know. But I'm sure during the week I'll um, I'll come up with a topic to um, to speak about. Have a good uh, weekend. Bye.